So, we're going to start our uh, large classroom session. I'm uh, Dan White. I'm a professor at Valparaiso University. It's in Northwest Indiana, and I get to sleep in my own bed tonight. I'm excited about that. Uh, uh, first up uh, is, uh, is Dmitry Shengti. It's close to correct me. And uh, let's see, Dmitry is an entrepreneur and founder of CadLab.io, a visual version control system and collaboration platform for PCB design and manufacturing. So please welcome Dmitry, and we'll get going. Okay, uh, thanks for coming over, guys. Can you hear well? Awesome. Yeah, so uh, we're building CadLab, and uh, we're helping engineers to build a better PCB design process to avoid painful mistakes and to manage the product faster. So let's see what we're going to uh, learn today. So, key takeaways. So we will, we will uh, discuss why we need version control system in the first place. I will uh, guide you through the very basic commands you need to know and easy to, easy to learn. Uh, to, to get started to really fast with, uh, with e uh, Git version control system. Uh, we will see what are potential pitfalls with Git. And uh, we will also see how we can use Skylab's visual tools to build a PCB design uh, mini process. Uh, and yeah, so I think if, just a quick note, if anyone from you ever called files like board underscore v3 underscore final underscore two, email your design uh, to, to hand off your design, use the mail for that. I accidentally lost your files, so overwritten them with, uh, with uh, some unstable version, or maybe overlooked a uh, design mistake in your uh, prototype, but then found it only in the physical physical prototype and had to reorder it again. So hopefully all of these we will we'll cover today, how to fix them. Uh, yeah, but before we start, I want to run a really fast contest, and then I've got a prize. The contest, uh, the contest will be as follows. Uh, I think everyone remembers the game, find 10 differences in two pictures. But we're going to play that with, with PCB design. So there will be two fragments of an Arduino board with just four changes on the right. And to anyone who first finds those uh, changes, uh, there will be a prize. Uh, I came all, all, all the way from Ukraine, so I brought special special prize. I, I know it's morning, but it's a Ukrainian vodka with hot pepper. It's hot as Kika. <laughs> okay, so, uh, and if no one finds that, we will, we will give it to Chris for organizing such a cool event. So, uh, ready? Let's go. Just four changes, easy. Okay. <laughs> okay, but we need four. Can you see more of them? Awesome. That's what I like about you know collectively working on projects and Git version control is really great for that. Okay, I will. Get, I, I gotta show this. This unfortunately, or you know, good for Chris goes to Chris. And we move on. We move on and I will show you how, how you can find them within five seconds or less. So why do we need version control system in the first place, right? First of all, to collaborate uh, with other people on the team. If you work without version control system, everyone on the team needs to track all the changes, manually somehow exchange them. And it's really error prone process and gotta cause you a lot of problems. With version control system, it, everything done automatically for you. So system just tracks all the files, edit, delete it, modif modified, and allows you to synchronize them between team members. The second thing is just organizing your files and, uh, and how you manage revisions. So without version control, you would, uh, anytime when you have a change which you're not sure if it will stick or not, 
you would create a copy of your file, call it v2, whatever, at a date. But no one follows that conventions. And what happens if you work with a team? And what happens if you also change not only board, but schematic and library? So it's a lot of headaches. And Git uh, and version control system in general help with that. And then another great thing about version controls and being able to travel back and forth to any revision. Uh, so you kind of always uh, in a safe place, even if you record something uh, incorrect in your, in your history of changes, at any time you can just go back and uh, uh, get, a, get a stable version. And then another very important concept is being able to see who changed what and when, right? So when you work in a team, you want to understand like what was changed from one version to another. And most of the version, version control systems they are intended for use with, uh, with software, with text files. But today I'm going to show you how we can apply it to uh, PCB design as well. And finally, backups, right? So regardless of whether it's uh, a centralized version control system or distributed system, there is a server where uh, the, the main repository sits and uh, you use this repository to exchange changes between uh, team members. So even if your local computer crashes, you can restore your design. So a lot of, lot of benefits using uh, version control. We will today cover Git version control. So I will uh, explain a little bit uh, how it works and then uh, guide you through 10 comments, just 10 comments you need to learn to get started. So Git is a de decentralized uh, distributed version control system, really popular thanks to GitHub, but it also has lots of benefits uh, or centralized system, one of the most famous SVN, for example. Uh, and it works, uh, uh, well, distributed means that there is a central repository which sits somewhere on the hosting, on the server, and then you can create as many local repositories as you want, and then you exchange changes between uh, them. For example, one of the differences from SVN, because you have this local repository, you can even work offline. You don't need to have uh, internet connection to, to be able to use version control. And then you can sync everything as soon as you uh, get online. Uh, now let's, uh, let's run quickly through the 10 commands you need to know. I will just uh, quickly go through them and explain what each command does. It's really, really easy. So first command is called git clone. You execute these commands in, uh, in the command line, but you also can use uh, one of the GUI clients available. There are tons of options, and we are actually also building our own uh, desktop client for, uh, for card optimized tasks. The git, uh, git clone command, uh, what it does, it just takes a full copy of the central, uh, central repository, it puts you on, on your local machine, and establishes a connection. So as soon, uh, whenever you have a new team member, they just execute this uh, command and they join, uh, join the collaboration. And the next command is uh, git pull. So you just pull, all, this command allows you to pull all the changes from the central repository to your local. So very basic scenario, you, you, you just clone your repository from somewhere, from GitHub for example, and then you, every time there are some changes which you need to synchronize to your uh, computer, you just run this command. It's easy. Everything gets synchronized uh, to your computer instantly. Then that was how to pull changes. Now we uh, explain how to contribute your changes to version control system. It, uh, uh, this process consists of several commands. The first one is called git status. It shows you what are the changes on your local computer. So you write modify uh, schematic, board, library, it tracks everything, and then uh, you might have forgotten already what you edited actually in this, uh, while, while working on this, but git status will show you all the files modified in your local, uh, local working copy. Then you select what files you want to put into the version control, create a new revision, right? Uh, you can specify exactly which files you, you want to add, like by, by specifying it just pa uh, passed to this uh, file. Or if you all, all changes look good to you, you just execute git add command uh, to add all of them into a, a new revision in, uh, in your version control system. And then when you added all your files to, uh, to revision, 
you execute git commit uh, function, which actually creates a new revision with all the changes you've made, right? You specify a description for your changes, so that when you look through your history later on, you can see all the uh, see all the commits and uh, you can see a descriptive message like what exactly was modified, footprints, uh, library modified, whatever it, whatever it is. So and and basically uh, the next command is really simple and also kind of similar to push, but it just makes the the uh, opposite. It just pushes your changes uh, to the central repository, and then everyone else can pull them. And that's basically the even six commands you need to know to already start using uh, Git. It's not, 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 a lot to, not a lot to learn. But there is also a great concept in Git, and then the next comments are about this concept. It's called branches. It gives you even more flexibility. You can, uh, in parallel, create, experiment on some features, and you can have like multiple uh, histories of changes, and then you can merge them together. And uh, I will quickly explain how to do that. So the common git branches, it just lists all the branches you have in your, in your repository. Um, and then in order to create a new branch, there is a check, uh, checkout uh, command, uh, which you just, uh, first of all, it allows you to switch between branches, right? So you have, for, uh, let's uh, have a use case. Uh, for example, you want to experiment with some new components and you don't want to override your existing design. So for that, you would create a new branch with, with, with copy all your, uh, all your files, and then you can play with your components, uh, new components in this uh, separate branch without touching your stable design. And if it worked out, you think that the new components uh, work better, you just merge branches together and uh, uh, up apply your changes. It's also very useful for when, when, for example, you work with a team and, and you want to approve changes before they get into the main design. So anyone would create a, uh, a new branch, suggest some modification to a schematic or PCB, whatever, and then when it's ready, uh, you would review changes from uh, between two uh, branches, and if they look fine, then you would only in this case merge this. So it gives you more control uh, on, on the quality side, for example, right? Uh, when you have multiple branches, you can also uh, sync them with the central repository. So uh, the central repository is just uh, the, the copy of your, of your local one, and you can even send uh, your changes from experimental branch to anyone on the team to work to continue working on that. And git fetch all command, it just looks through the central repository, finds all the branches on the central repository, uh, and copies them to your local, uh, local uh, machine. And the final final uh, command is uh, git merge. I already kind of explained what it does. It just merges branches together. So whenever you uh, have several branches with some experimental features, you can have them in the final design, you execute this uh, merge command. And important thing to know, there is a, a nasty thing which can happen, it's called marriage conflicts. Uh, the, the most scariest thing which can happen to, uh, to, to Git, but it's, uh, it's easy to fix. Uh, when it happens, when, when two people uh, modified the same file, and we know that it's better not modify PCB uh, design uh, together, uh, but what is great, by the way, about KiCad is that uh, hierarchical pages are separate files, so if you work on a schematic and you have hierarchical, uh, hierarchical pages, then Git just handles it very well. It doesn't have any conflicts. With PCB, you can have a conflict, and if you end up having a conflict, then the, uh, you can easily roll back that uh, uh, to cancel, cancel the merge, and then compare your design and see what are the changes, why it's conflicting, and then ma uh, merge them uh, manually. So great thing about Git is everything is reversible. So if you do anything, you can still go back to, to, to normal state. And it's uh, really important to, to know. And now let's switch to the visual part of this. Uh, so Git is a, is a common uh, uh, version control system. It's used by multiple platforms. It's very com common in software development. And uh, and you can use GitHub, for example, or GitLab, or B Bitbucket 
to uh, start working with Git because they provide you uh, a central repository where to host your central repository. At CatLab we do the same, but we provide additional graphical layer which supports uh, schematics and PCBs and uh, also soon we will add support for libraries as well. So what we do, we, uh, we scan the Git repository and we find all the uh, schematics and uh, layouts and render them uh, in the browser. And the interface is the same as in KiCad, for example. So you can, uh, you can navigate, you can zoom in, zoom out, you can turn on and off layers, you can uh, switch items and, and so on. And when you have this history of changes and you want to uh, look like what was done yesterday, for example, right? Uh, with just plain Git, you would need to check out to the previous revision, then go and ab uh, uh, open this revision in uh, in KiCad. And with uh, with CatLab, you can just go through the history and uh, and uh, lo look through the changes. Uh, I mean, lo lo look through the designs. So currently, we support uh, Autodesk Eagle, and uh, we just recently launched KiCad. Uh, and um, I invite all of you to, to try, to try it out. It's uh, completely free for open source uh, projects, so you can create as many projects as you want and uh, publish them uh, publicly. And uh, yeah, and then another great feature uh, I think which we have is uh, interactive annotations. So every time when you were to comment on some design and you would create a screenshot and send the screenshot to someone with, with your comment. Now you don't need to do that. You just uh, select an area somewhere on your schematic or PCB, you leave a comment, and then your teammate can, uh, teammates can also come, uh, reply to your comment and eventually if that was an issue, they can mark it as a, as a result. And then uh, one of the core features I think uh, and it's also basis for PCB design review, uh, it's uh, visual diff. So in addition to just displaying the, the render, what we do, we, we also uh, compare different revisions of a schematic and PCB and highlight them uh, with color so that you can see which elements were added, green elements are added, red elements are deleted, and the orange elements are modified so you can go through the list of all changes from one revision f uh, to another, inspect everyone individually, you can dig into the metadata, see the values, what are the value changes, what are design rules changes, for example. So we, we, we show all that. And by the way, uh, that's how the, the first board look uh, from, the, from the contest. That, that's where the, the changes were. And how, that's how you see them uh, on CADLAB. I think you, you found them much, much faster. Yeah, and, uh, and finally, uh, the PCB design review. So based on uh, visual diff and uh, annotations, you can put in place a PCB design review. It's a really common practice and proof practice in software development, which helps you to improve quality. But I think for, for hardware, it yields even more results because uh, if, if you overlook a mistake in your PCB and you order this and you then uh, wait for one week or th two weeks to get a new prototype, then the, you, you, you lose a lot of time and you also lose a lot of costs because in addition to just uh, the cost of the manufacturing and shipping, you also need to calculate your team's burn rate, for example, right? And lost opportunity of launching the product later. So uh, with PCB design review, you can uh, you can put in play this quality control process when every change, if, for example, in the stable design or uh, into some you know close release version, you can use this to review and comment uh, on every change uh, using visual diff and uh, and annotations. So uh, that was pretty much it. I'm uh, happy to answer any questions you guys have regarding the Git in general or, uh, or uh, CADLAB in particular. Yeah? We are working on the, on the, on the client, desktop client, but it, uh, it will need to have a connection to the internet as well. So it will be easier because you, don't, you won't need to uh, learn all the comments and then uh, there will be some additional features uh, for tracking your files automatically and giving you not notifications, for example, so that you don't forget to run the status command, uh, it will track it uh, for you. So uh, 
it's planned, but it will need to con to have a connection to to the internet. Yeah. It's as I said, it's really tricky for uh, for any CAD system. So that's why it's arguably to use. Uh, someone would argue that it's better to use a centralized uh, control system where you can lock your files and no one else can can do that. But with uh, with branches, you can kind of overcome that. And we are also actually planning to work on the conflict resolution uh, interface for 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 Git. So that, that would be uh, really useful. And that's why I mentioned that with KiCad, what is great about KiCad is uh, with, with schematic, it has, it, it don't have this problem that much. But with PCBs, if you take KiCad or Eagle or any, any, any PCB, it's still uh, really difficult to, uh, to, to edit them together. It's more. It's more about the process. Uh, can you the the yeah, sure, sure. So the question was about uh, quality control. Uh, how is it done? Whether it's automatic or not. Uh, at the moment, it's uh, it, it depends a lot on the on the design, right? So uh, it's basically uh, we provide tools for you to be to easily control uh, quality. So we do not automatically control because we don't know what the final design should be. Uh, but with with these tools, you can uh, really quickly see what are the changes, and even without other person explaining you what what was changed, right? So that yeah. Not yet. No, it's uh, we, we down the road. We want to add this as well. Uh, as well as uh, tracking uh, the differences with bill of materials, for, <coughs> for example. And so it, it's planned, but uh, as of now, there is no uh, DRC rule checks. And uh, down the road, uh, we also plan to add Gerber support and also run some uh, DFM checks as well. Yeah? How many users do you have now? We have, uh, I think, close to 1,500 uh, 1, users. No, not really. So uh, we uh, we saw we saw some workarounds when you can create a picture and then cr uh, compare these two pictures. But it's not reliable because the the, the more complex the design is, uh, the more details are overlaid and you can't actually see. So what we do, we actually uh, uh, we, we parse the the source files and we uh, compare them directly. So we and then we render them uh, like each change individually, and you can still turn on and off all the layers to dig into the, this particular change, whether it's, uh, you know, some wire or via or wh whatever. So it's, uh, it's not just comparing images. It's uh, more, more detailed. Yeah? Uh, right now, no, it's, ca it's coming soon. Uh, yeah, we, we have uh, good reason to, to believe that we will integrate with them, uh, but it's, uh, it's not ready yet. And if you are interested in Altium, just uh, go. Uh, please go to the website and vote for Altium, uh, because that also helps us to prioritize what pl platforms we add next. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, we are uh, in connection with them. Uh, they. Uh, they, uh, I think, last August they finally added Git support. They refused to add it for years and years, and then uh, we talked to them, and uh, they said, oh, Git sounds great, and they added support, and we might integrate with them, but um, as of now, I don't have a timeline for that. Okay. Yeah? So you mentioned that uh, Dream is asking your Git. Dream is at Red Team, and, and the Orange Trap release. Yes. 
it can be multiple things. It can be repositioned, for example, element, right? And you can also switch, uh, let me quickly go back. You can use this switcher on the top to see like what was the previous position, the current position. And also we track all the metadata changes. So if, if it wasn't change over position, but for example, just value of a resistor, then we, uh, let me see if I have more detailed screenshot. Uh, no, I don't. So we, on the right, here on the right, we uh, when you click on this, it expands and shows you all metadata as well. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys.